Good evening and Sorry. welcome to English News. Uh, I'm Charlie Grayson. And I'm Chris Sillette. Uh, our first piece this evening. Amper Chalim Prakayat Nakon Ratchasima has presented a prayer chanting program for better living in 2013 to honor the king and the other members of the royal family. Coping with the district's Buddhist ministry, Amper Chalim Prakayat Nakon Ratchasima presented a prayer chanting program for better living in 2013 to honor the king and all other royal family members. The program is taking place at Wat Saman Mit in Tambon Nungu Lum and Pur Chalum Prakyat. The program's first year was led by General Le Witiakan, an officer from the Thai Royal Army and an abbot from Chalum Prakyat Buddhist Ministry. Over 300 citizens dressed in white joined the program this time. The prayer chanting program is presented on the last day of every month until November 2013 a total of 11 times. The prayers in the program are for peace, unity, and prosperity in Thailand amongst the Thai people. So do you know much about prayer chanting in Thailand and Thai culture? I've heard it. Mm. I hope it works. I'd like 2013 to be a good year. I would, I would too. Be great. Our next story up tonight the president of Thai Samaki District Administration Organization in the Emperor of Wang Nam Kiao in Nakom Narchisima has been boasting that they are pretty much ready for the flower festival which will begin there on the 9th of this month. Residents and government officials in the Thai Samaki District of Emperor Wang Nam Kiao in Nakom Narchisima province are putting the finishing touches on their upcoming festival the chrysanthemums, in blue, chrysanthemums Bloom in the Mist. Over 16 acres of land has been transformed into a giant garden full of chrysanthemum flowers. The festival will be open to the public beginning on February 9th and will last until the 15th of February 2013. The president of Thai Samaki District Administration Organization said that there are a few things that still need to be done, but that they will be ready on the day it opens on February 9th, and the festival will surely attract visitors and tourists, and it will be a benefit to the district's economy. The festival presents 16 acres of chrysanthemum gardens, as well as chrysanthemum exhibitions and demonstrations. There will be O-top booths and stage performances from local schools and bands. The festival is free of charge and open all day. For more information, you can contact the Thai Samaki District Administration Organization at 044-249-654 or contact the Tourism Authority of Thailand Nakhon Ratchasima office at 044-213-666. Well, I'm looking forward to coming to uh, the Thai Samaki Flower Festival. I think mm -hmm. it's, is it Saturday or is it an all weekend? The ninth is Saturday and um, I'm planning to head up to Wang Nam Kia on Saturday. Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, maybe that could be quite en entertaining. Um, later on, we've got stories uh, on a public high-speed train that will be going up through Isan from Bangkok to Udon, um, an ancient wood uh, that was found in a village in, in the north, sugar cane, uh, a sugarcane special, and, uh, and two more stories coming up in the second half. But next, we have a story from me. The public hearing event organized by the Ministry of Transport opened a chance for Karat residents so they could participate and share their opinions over the northern, uh, northeastern line high-speed train project. The government announced the policy to establish a high-speed train line to different regions across Thailand on August the 23rd, 2012. And one out of the four lines is the northeastern line that connects Bangkok to Nong Kai via Nakhon Ratchasima province. The Ministry of Transport has been managing the project and is organizing a public hearing in each region. The public hearing event was held at the Simatani Hotel today. Nakhon Ratchasima's governor, Dr. Winai Buapradit, was the president of the event. 
The high-speed train project will help people travelling in and out of Bangkok much easier and more conveniently. The train will be designed for safety and energy-saving purposes. And once the project is finished, it should take up only 90 minutes to travel from Bangkok to Nakhon Ratchasima. However, this project requires a public hearing because citizens can provide some reflections and feedback for the project. The next public hearing event will be held on February the 7th in Udon Thani province. February 7th is the next hearing? February 7th in Udon. So that's about tomorrow. Ah, what is it? Fifth? Sixth sixth today. Yeah. Yes, moving. Moving I urge road. all Thai people to vote yes on the train. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with Song Crowd coming up soon and everybody traveling between Bangkok and all everywhere back in Isan. But That's our sweet. next story up tonight, that would be nice. Our next story is about uh, the Forensic Science Police Center 3 held a training seminar for police and rescue workers to help them coordinate better when dealing with evidence collection and crime scene preservation. Colonel Siri Chantanara Pratin, uh, the chief scientist from the Forensic Science Police Center 3, presided over uh, the meeting Evidence Collection and Crime Scene Preservation Training for Rescue Worker Staff. The training, put, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the training seminar took place at the meeting hall inside the Buta Tam 31 Shrine Foundation, Ampo Pakchong in the Nong, uh, Nakhon Ratchasima district, uh, province. Over 40 rescue staff participated in the training seminar and received information about how to collect evidence and preserve a crime scene. Colonel Seri said that technology has been growing f much faster nowadays and criminals have been using uh, technology in committing various crimes. Evidence collection and crime scene pr uh, preservation are the two most important things in any investigation and greatly assist officers in identifying and arre arresting offenders quickly. Rescue staff have always been a help to police officers, but without the right knowledge, evidence at a crime scene can be moved or damaged, so, tr so the training seminar aimed to educate rescue staff about the proper ways to collect evidence and maintain a crime scene so they can better assist the police in tracking down and capturing criminals. So... Um, crackdown on criminals, excellent work. I That's all we've got time for in the first half. We'll be back after these adverts. See you in a bit. Welcome back. Hello. Hello. Um, our next piece. Residents at Changle village in Nan province found an ancient iron wood log inside the community pool whilst they were dredging the pond to solve the drought problem in the village. Residents at Chang Changle village in Tambon Rim, Amper Tawang Pa, Nan province, we were excited to see an ancient wood log inside the community pond when they were dredging the pond to solve drought problems in the village. 
Elderly people believe it is a sacred thing and the Holy Spirit led them to it. Previously, one of the workers hired to dredge the pond had bizarre dreams for three days in a row. He dreamt of a lady swimming in the spot where they were about to find uh, or about to dredge and find the, um, the wooden log. A few days later, they found a huge iron wood log and it took them almost two hours to get it out of the pond. The log is 23.6 meters long and 3.1 meters in diameter. The log is thought to be over 300 years old, according to the local residents. The village headman, Mr. Lem Tong Sutachai, will discuss what to do with it with other leading government office officers. Primarily, they will build up a shrine to the log so that it can become an auspicious place for the village in the future. Ironwood log. So, quite cool. It is quite cool. 23 meters long. Um, and some girth, 3.1 meters. Yeah. I mean, it's quite amazing when you find, they do, you find things like that. Yeah. It's like, uh, and it's going to be great for them too. Absolutely. It reminds me a little bit of the, the tree that is based in Pimai. Have you seen it? The oh, yeah. The huge the ban banyan the tree. banyan tree in Pimai. That must be one of the, the, the fattest trees <laughs> that I've ever seen. Um, it's a very well-fed tree. It is. It's a well-fed tree. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, well, congratulations on finding that log. Hopefully it does bring them good luck. Yeah. Our next piece up tonight. Nearly 10,000 acres of sugarcane paddies have been damaged due to an infestation of sugarcane caterpillars. The main reasons are thought to be the ongoing drought and the rice paddies nearby. Mr. Wiraragel Prachia, an agricultural academic from Nakon Rachasima's Agricultural Extension Office, has revealed that the sugarcane caterpillar situation in the province, especially in Emperor Kamsa, Kamsa Kesang, uh, is simply deteriorating. Only in this district, nearly in this district, excuse me, in this district alone, nearly 10,000 acres of sugarcane paddies have been damaged by the sugarcane caterpillars. The situation has been tending to get worse due to the dry weather, and those sugarcane paddies are next to rice field where sugarcane caterpillars are, are fed and where they're, where they're born. The sugarcane caterpillar is a serious pest of sugarcane, as well as corn, rice, and sorghum, as they tend to eat the trunks of those crops and they end up dying rather quickly. Farmers are being urged to take measures to protect their paddies from being attacked by the sugarcane caterpillars by spraying carbo carbosulfan liquid mixed with water, as well as just keeping a, a sharp eye on their fields and trying their best to round up whatever pests they can find. Hmm. I remember living with a, a lady who once was uh, discovering the health benefits of eating these caterpillars and all sorts. So are those the things you eat? Are they? Are they? I'm, well, I'm not sure. They look similar. They do look similar. They look I'm about not. as appealing and tasty. Those things are okay, Charlie. As the market ones. Um, Don't knock until you've tried it. Mm. Our next piece is another piece from the SWAT Cats. The Sports Science Department in the Sports Authority of Thailand Region 3 plans on promoting non-violence in football games after fighting has broken out in many games recently. The ruling will first apply in the next SWAT Cats match. Mr. Sura Wut Kusum, a scientist from the Sports Science Department in the Sports Authority of Thailand Region 3, has revealed more information about the program to reduce violence in soccer games. Football has been growing more popular in Thailand recently. There are many teams from many different provinces and organizations and they all have their own fans. During the game, sometimes they get furious and upset. Some of them throw bottles or start fighting, which causes violence in football games. So the department sets up a program to stop violence and restore the good image to Thai people. The program presents violence in a soccer game exhibition, a caravan and flyers distribution. The program will start in Nakam Rachisima's next game against Chonburi FC on February the 17th 
and then the province of Ubon Ratchitani, Konken, and Lui later in the year. Have you been down to the SWAT Cats, Chris? Uh, not this year, not yet. No. Looks like Newcastle or something. SWAT Cats. This is, this is the SWAT Cats. And um, I've noticed that um, they've taken a couple of rulings from the UK and started implementing them down at the, at the stadium. Um, mainly, the, the need to take the bottle tops off any drinks that you take into the arena to stop them from being used as missiles. So um, it's good that violence is going to be cracked down on and hopefully it'll stop on the pitch as well. Excellent. What have you got for our final Indeed. piece? Our final piece tonight concerns a little bit more about football. The Thai Premier League company has released the schedule for 2013 and it looks like Nakhon Ratchasima will be facing the Bangkok Football Club on March 2nd, 2013. As KCTV had previously reported, uh, the delay in football Division One in Thai Premier League 2013 has now been announced and the schedule has been set for the season. Dr. Weechit Yembongrung, the president, said there will not be another delay in announcements again and the programs will go on like the way it was. Nakhon Ratchasima Football Club or the SWAT Cats will play against Bangkok Football Club on March 22, 2013 at 6.30 p.m. In the, in the evening as planned, but the second match will be played against a different team, TTM Football Club at Lopebury Central Stadium on March, 19th, uh, March 9th, excuse me, 2013 at 4 p.m. So Division One has had a few changes made, but the season still starts on March 2nd, and here are some more details about other teams. On March 2nd, 2013, Thai Port Football Club will play Ayutthaya Football Club at 4 p.m., and the BBCU Football Club will play the Phuket Football Club at 6 p.m. Siam Navy Football Club will play the Gulf Sauterbury Football Club at 6.30 p.m. On March 3rd, uh, 2013, PTT Rayong will play Thailand Tobacco Football Club. Konkan Football Club will play the Trat Football Club. Krabi FC will play Nakhon Pratom United and Siracha Suzuki Football Club will play Rayong United. All matches will be starting at 6 p.m. Excellent. I noticed uh, this weekend there was a nice friendly match between the Swat Cats and Mung Tong United. Mm -hmm. um, so it appears that, that um, we're attracting quite, quite big games now. Yeah, well, That's they got the schedule set for Division One, so mm. we can all mark our calendars accordingly. Lovely. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Uh, we'll be back again next week, but remember to tune in tomorrow at 8 o'clock. I've been Charlie Croson. And I'm still Chris Sillette. Good evening. <laughs>